getting to the live line this morning. She is a chiropractor, doctor of chiropractic, and director at the New Jersey Chiropractic Healing Center. Dr. Donna Perillo, we're talking about your gut this morning. She joins me on the live line. Hi, Donna. Hey, how are you? Thank you for having me on the show. I'm so glad to have you. So if your gut ain't right, then you're just not doing well. I mean, I think that's just kind of a general consensus. If your stomach hurts, everything's a problem. Yeah, no question about it, and especially in this day and age with all our genetically modified, hybridized, and whatever else our food supply is, Mm -hmm. um, it's not anything that our genes have seen before. Yeah, it it doesn't know how to handle it, does it? It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, You know, um, genetics and evolution take years and years and years, so, you know, the, the... The foods we're eating are not what our grandparents or our great-grandparents, even our parents ate. Right. All right. So if somebody just texted me, they they like to comment on the show via social media these days. So they want to know how a doctor of chiropractic knows about a stomach, if that's not your area. Um, They want to know why you're talking about stomachs. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I have several degrees. Um, So I have a chiropractic degree. Mm-hmm. And um, I also have a master's degree in nutrition. I am a certified nutrition specialist, and I have a diplomate in nutrition. So nutrition is sort of um, my forte, mm-hmm. so to speak. And, that, and that, that question might be, well, why would a chiropractor even do that? Well, let me give you an example. So somebody comes to me, they have low back pain, okay? Mm-hmm. And the nerves that go to the low back also go to... Uh, reproductive organs and also go to some of the digestive organs. So when somebody has back pain, uh, sometimes they also have other symptomatology that can be related to the gut or can be related to reproductive organs. It's very common to see women during a menstrual cycle, they will get cramps, menstrual cramps, but they'll also get low back pain and they might get digestive issues, or constipation, diarrhea, or just uh, cramping in the gut. Mm-hmm. So, so we're not, we're very multifaceted and we break things down into systems so we can study them, but the body doesn't break things into systems. They work as a unit. And one thing affects the other. That's what people need to understand about chiropractic because if, if your spine's out of line, you just don't feel fine. It's kind of that simple. Yeah, one of the things is uh, chiropractic, uh, when, once insurance started covering chiropractic, everything became lumped into physical therapy, and so we became pain doctors because chiropractic really helps back pain, neck pain, headaches, all of the above, uh, all the joints, everything. Because mm-hmm. obviously if, if things are misaligned, there's going to be pressure, and pressure is going to cause decreased blood flow, decreased lymph flow, and decreased nerve pressure. But chiropractors are really nervous system doctors. When we adjust people, we're really, um, when we adjust the spine, don't forget the spine connects to the brain and connects to the organs and uh, the hormonal system. So we're really talking about adjusting everything, including um, moods and personalities, because you're affecting neurotransmitters and other chemicals that are made throughout the body. Yeah. So if you just feel crappy overall, call the chiropractor because they can probably help you out. So um, when, it, when it comes to eight facts we should know about our gut, which is something that you put together about gut health, what is it besides the fact that we're eating foods that are, have new, I guess, representation in them, for lack of a better word, because there are so many different things, but they're made out of things that I don't know were supposed to be for human consumption in the first place as far as different sorts of, of corn syrup or whatever else, right? Right, for sure. All right. So every food group has enzymes that help to break them down. And let's just take a protein. So mm-hmm. uh, protein uh, has to be broken down into a, an amino acid. When things are not broken down properly... And so, so the body innately knows, okay, I mean, as soon as you put a, a piece of protein in your mouth, it, it goes right to the brain. The brain signals to the stomach to start secreting hydrochloric acid to help, and pepsin and other things, to, to break that down. And 
so it innately knows what to do. So if we took a carbohydrate and took a fat, it, it happens all at once. But now we take something that, say, is hybridized or genetically modified. So now let's just say uh, uh, a soybean. So let's just say they took a soybean and so the plant, so what they do is they'll take a gene maybe from a lightning bug and because that will help so that other bugs don't eat the plant so that they can get more out of the plant. And so now when you're eating soy products that are genetically modified, and I'm just picking lightning bugs, but yeah. I don't, you know, there could be mm. other genetically modified foods in there that we don't even know. And, um, and so what happens is they don't, the, the body doesn't know what that is. So what it does is it thinks it's a foreign object. And so when you have something that your immune system perceives as foreign, you, you can have what's called an antibody antigen reaction. So you're going to have almost an allergic inflammatory reaction within the gut. And that sets up a myriad of issues because now that could create, so if these things aren't broken down and they're bigger molecules than you would have with uh, a carbohydrate or a protein or a fat, then those bigger molecules, when they, they'll try to get through the gut wall, and the first place everything goes after when you're digesting is uh, uh, to the liver. So, and it gets into there, and so these molecules are, are perceived as foreign, and then you can have an antibody-antigen reaction, and that's where now uh, genetics can play into it. Wherever the weakest part is, it could affect that. So, so that you have an antibody-antigen reaction, which translates to inflammation, and now your gut is enabled to really break down the proteins, fats, and carbs the way they should because now you have introduced all of this foreign matter. And that creates what's called leaky gut. Um, a lot of people now know what leaky gut is. So what that is is that where the, the holes in the lining of the gut where your amino acids and your fatty acids would go through now you have these bigger molecules that aren't digested all the way getting in, and that creates havoc. And one of the big things is 70 to 80% of your immune system is in your gut. I've never so heard of leaky gut. What, what does it, is it leaking somewhere? Well, yeah, so when the, yeah. So in other words, when you totally, when you, when digestion is done, uh -huh. the, the products are, sent to the portal vein and into the liver. Okay. And then the liver segments and sends, the liver has oh, over 300 functions. I mean, it's, it's amazing what the liver can do. But um, so that's what a leaky gut is. is it's actually the, the mucosal lining. Think of, think of your gut, right? And it mm -hmm. has, let's just say, they're just little holes for the amino acids to go through. But now here comes along, let's just say you had uh, something that is uh, not recognized. So now that isn't broken down properly. It causes an antibody antigen reaction, which is an immune response, which causes inflammation. And so that particle is going to be bigger than, than an amino acid or a fatty acid, and that's going to go, get through. Now it gets into the bloodstream. And so now it can wreak havoc. So it's it's literally leaking. It's not just a term. It's it's leaking. Yes, it's leaking these other particles that our body sh doesn't really want or need or use or recognize. So that's crazy. Okay. So how do we how do we avoid stuff like this? I mean, I I can't afford to buy extremely healthy food all the time because it's expensive. But should we be watching for certain things to avoid gut associated? issues well i think one of the main things are all the chemicals that are in the foods mm -hmm. and i think one of the the main things is to avoid any processed foods all your processed foods or most of your processed foods are um somehow they're using something that is not healthy it's not something that our ancestors ate it's not like you eat a banana or you eat a carrot. Um, it's something that was made and processed. Uh, I think it was back in the 50s when they first processed um, the white flour. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, white wheat originally you had wheat germ, wheat bran, and when they made white bread, they took all of that out, and a lot of your B vitamins and a lot of your fiber and other things are in that. So it's it's interesting. Um, when I was growing up, we ate a lot of farina, mm-hmm. and it's interesting to see. Uh, they used to say that they took it out. They don't say that anymore because people are looking for the wheat bran and the fiber. <laughs> so it's, it's interesting to see how the marketing of these products has evolved. That's funny. All right. So if we have a gut issue, should we see a chiropractor? Should we see a nutritionist? Who should we see? Well, there are several uh, practitioners that can help you. Um, a lot of... Uh, Chiropractors, uh, you know, we do get nutrition as part of our curriculum. Mm -hmm. So most of us are well-versed, and some of us have gone on and gotten other advanced degrees and have studied. I mean, I've been studying this stuff since uh, probably the early 1990s. Um, And, of course, a lot of times you get involved in this stuff because you've had a problem. And that's how I became a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because so, people will ask me, well, why, how did you become a chiropractor? Because I was very, very medical as a child. Allergies, asthma, all kinds of things. And that's how I got into this. I, I didn't know about that I shouldn't have this food or that food. And I had allergy testing like you couldn't believe. But one of the things is when your gut isn't working right, now you're more sensitive to the environmental allergens, mm-hmm. like the pollen and the grass and... and uh, Ragweed and Air. moss and all of that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, most of the time, most nutritionists are going to look at the gut. They're going to, the, you know, if the gut isn't working, and a lot of people take supplements. So, but if the, the gut isn't working, then you're not going to be able to digest the supplements or and, and absorb them. That's the other thing. Mm-hmm. So, you have to fix the gut. That's the first thing you have to do. All right. I wish we had a lot more time because this is interesting to me because so many people have have gut issues. And and if you're a wine drinker, be careful. You're probably going to end up gassy. Um, If they want to learn more information about this, Dr. Donna, how do they do that? Yeah, my website is drperillo.com. That's D-R and my last name, P-E-R-I-L-L-O. And that is my website. They can contact me there. Uh, They can email me there. They can call me there. Um, I also have a podcast called Habits of Healing, and that is on Stitcher and iTunes. They could, um, you know, listen to some of the things there. I have different people who deal in the healing arts Mm -hmm. that talk about that. Uh, Several people I've interviewed. Uh, One of my friends is a chef, all gluten-free. Another one of my friends is a coach that, you know, because sometimes people have no clue where to start. But, um, yeah, so one of the things when I got my master's in nutrition that I wanted to mention about one of the eight facts is about eating fermented foods. And one of the things when I did that, I did it on phytoestrogens and breast cancer. And it was interesting because in Japan they eat a lot of fermented foods. Mm -hmm. And so they had a decreased breast cancer rate than we have here in the States. But as soon as they adapted our American diet, the rate was the same. So it's interesting. Yeah. The, the probiotics, the prebiotics, and, and don't forget those things are, are the friendly bacteria. They're synergistic. They fight the bad bugs, the parasites, the, the, the viruses, whatever gets into the gut. And so it's really very, that's, that's another very important thing. All right. And if you want more information, you can always get a hold of Dr. Donna at any one of the sites aforementioned. And it'll also be a podcast on our website and at iTunes Podcasts available for you to listen again. Dr. Donna, thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. I'll talk to you again sometime. Yes, anytime. Thank you again. You're welcome. Bye-bye.